Hello, folks. I'm here at the lovely home of Dr. Orrin Justice, DDS. Is that correct? That's correct. Yes. That's correct. I thought that it would be a nice uh, idea to come, you know, to your home and, and tape just to see exactly not, to, you know, how you live or anything like that, but put just you at ease. put you at ease a little more because, you know, you're normally at the, you know, at the shop, you know, or at the office mostly, but here I figured it would be a sort of a nice, relaxing, you know, uh, uh, atmosphere. Yes. So yes. does that yes, make sense? That works. That All works. right. I but I thought uh, first that the first thing, you know, you look relaxed. See? <laughs> you look relaxed. <laughs> I enjoy your interview. I'll tell you that. <laughs> and, uh, you know, it's close to the ho holiday, so why not? But I thought that uh, to get serious a little bit, um, and I like to start off with, uh, with children, um, and maybe you could sort of tell us something about when – at what age would a child start having problem with their teeth, even if they um, start taking care of them? But I'm thinking about diseases and things. Does that start early in a in a child? It can start early, and a, and a, a lot of it has to do with home care. One of the things that we see uh, frequently uh, is uh, what we call baby bottle caries, and what that is is that uh, a parent. Uh, or caregiver will give a child a bottle with milk or fruit juice or, or some other beverage that uh, has sugar in it. And the child would just keep it in his mouth constantly and just suck a little bit, swallow, suck a little bit, swallow. And as his teeth develop, it'll, they'll literally decay from the inside, from the, from the inside, uh, the tongue side. And to look at the teeth, they're fine. And the mom or uh, the caregiver won't be aware of anything until the teeth actually start breaking off. And at this point, um, all the teeth that are involved will have to be extracted mm -hmm. because they're literally decayed all the way through. So, so parents would have to be careful at a young age giving children uh, sweeteners? Sweet milk, uh, soda, uh, anything that's left in the mouth after he finishes eating. Like you never want to put a child to bed with anything other than water in a bottle if you're going to give him a bottle. Never milk. Uh, never a uh, beverage with any sugar in it because he'll just suck on it, drink a little bit, suck on it, drink a little bit, and the sugar constantly bathes his teeth. So and it just eats them right out of the mouth. And so there's a, a certain a, amount of sugar in milk. Oh yes, milk is milk is loaded with sugar, hmm. a lot of sugar, lactose, a lot lactose of sugar. Lactose and, and yeah. sugar. Uh -huh. Okay, let's move up the scale a little bit and uh, talk about uh, preteens or and, and close to teens. What about them in regards to the kinds of uh, uh, things that they do, diet, things that they eat that would cause problems? Um, well, again, you have your diet. It's just, if it's high in, uh, in, in sugar, period, high in sugar, the, uh, if you take a tooth out of the mouth and lay it on the table, it'll never decay. It'll just stay there. It'll, it will literally never decay. You need, you need uh, sugar and you need poor oral hygiene and you will get decay on that tooth in there, and of course the liquid. Um, kids tend to eat a lot of sugar. Right? It's, how do you say, don't eat ice cream, and don't eat candy, it's good, it's good. But if you do uh, indulge in that, you must maintain really good oral hygiene. And what I suggest to, uh, to kids is that keep a toothbrush with them at school, because a lot of times this is when they get it. And whenever they finish eating, just brush. You don't need toothpaste, you don't need anything, you just brush, you disrupt this plaque formation on the teeth, and you will stop it right there. Hmm. Okay, let's, let's move up to uh, teenagers and braces. I notice they have a new type of brace out, whereas before the kids didn't like to wear them because they looked, you know, a little so, ugly. Yeah. 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 Um, what about braces? When should, or oh, how would a kid know that they need braces? Um, there are s several reasons, okay. One is, a, let's say, a functional reason. Let's say that uh, the kid or the child doesn't chew properly and can't chew properly. It could be because the teeth are very malaligned. He needs braces or some type of orthodontics treatment to align them. And I guess the biggest reason for braces is uh, cosmetic. You know, I want my teeth straight, aligned. I don't want the spaces. I don't want them turned and rotated. And that's another reason for braces. And 
the time to do that will be really depending on the condition. We have children that we start with orthodontic treatment at seven years old. Now, that's when they have a functional problem. The teeth are not fitting together properly. And if you start guiding them in their development, a lot of times when he's a teenager, he won't need them. I'll say, well, say if he waits till later and he does need them as a teenager, then you'll have to actually get into the wire braces or sometimes Invisalign hmm. to align and straighten things up. Hmm. What about uh, dentures? How early would a person need dentures? Other than, you know, say an accident, but say lack of care, when would a, at what age do you find? I saw a patient last week, this is a, now, this is a bit unusual, that had dentures when he was 16 years old. Wow. 16. And he, he now, he was 50-some years, so he's had dentures that long. Hmm. Um, other than a true debilitating disease, there's no reason for a 16-year-old to lose his teeth, hmm. other than pure, simple neglect. Just, you know, if you don't take care of them, if you don't brush them, you don't floss them, sooner or later you're going to lose them. One at a time, maybe all of them, you know. It so happens that uh, he grew up in a very poor environment uh, on a farm, and he absolutely knew nothing about oral hygiene. Hmm. Literally knew nothing about them. Hmm. And when he went to his first dental visit at 16, everything was gone. Hmm. Literally gone. That's gone. So, wow. Now, I notice you have a new procedure. I don't know how new it is, but something you were talking about before the interview was something about sedation. Uh, we have what we call conscious sedation. About oh, 15 years ago, uh, the laws in Nevada were changed. We used to do a lot of IV. That's a shot in the arm to put you to sleep. And uh, we used to do a lot of that, but they changed the laws. And now you need a great deal of specialized equipment if you're going to literally put a patient totally to sleep or you need to hospitalize them and the cost on that is very prohibitive. So what we're doing now is what we call conscious sedation. We give you an oral medication and it puts you way down. Doesn't put you totally out, but you're not aware that you're not out, you know. But the advantage of this is that I can stop and I can talk to you, say, hey, are you okay, everything okay? And you will come up, you will respond and go back, and then you go right back down. Hmm. So it it's really good for apprehensive patients. And you know, there are a lot, no one likes to go to, I'm gonna go to the dentist and have a good time. No one does that, you know? Even people who just go routinely, it's not like this is the high point of my day sort of thing, you know? Well, I used to tell the doctors, hey, do what you gotta do. <laughs> But then maybe I might not be normal. <laughs> well, I could be. Please, <laughs> please. Oh, folks, did you hear that? <laughs> but uh, this, uh, this I can understand. But do you find now that uh, more of your patients uh, like the new procedure, whereas they don't have to be put under? Do you find more? Or is it? I, I you know, um, most of the people I treat, I treat just with local anesthetic. Mm -hmm. I use some, some laughing gas, nitrous oxide on some. But the people who, who really need or require the conscious sedation uh, don't go to the dentist mm -hmm. because they're literally afraid of it. And this is an opportunity for them to literally go. We go in, we have the first appointment, mm -hmm. we'll see what you need, we'll talk about it. And the next appointment, you'll have to bring someone because you can't drive, you know. Mm -hmm. And we give you the medication, we put you down, and we will usually do most, if not all, of the treatment in one appointment. One appointment. One appointment. Oh. So it makes it, 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 it brings dentistry to people who normally wouldn't get it. Wouldn't get it, you know? right. So it works, and it's a good procedure. Right. Is there anything you'd like to leave with our uh, audience uh, before a little time we have left? Uh, since we're on that subject, I tell people who are afraid to, of the dentist to go frequently. Mm -hmm. And you go frequently, and if there's anything wrong, it's small. You know, and it, it's bad when you have your first appointment is like a four hour appointment, and you have mm -hmm. to do this and that and the other. It's much easier if it's a 30 minute appointment and you just have a small filling, right. you know, or maybe you just only need a cleaning. So mm -hmm. go frequently. Mm -hmm. But even if you don't go, we have the capability mm -hmm. to make the dental appointment a lot more pleasurable mm -hmm. than unenjoyable. Right. 
Well, listen, Doc, I want to thank you. Uh, oh. You know, for I always enjoy talking to you. <laughs>